like a lot of you, I draw inspiration for the stuff that I model from stuff that I see. And here on ArtStation, I want to introduce you to a guy named Max Marherat. He's uh, from the Ukraine, and as you can see, he's the lead artist at Korbak Studio. And so his stuff is, is just amazing. And I want to start a project. I'm not going to include this as my entry to the future challenge. Um, I'll stick with what I did before, my file that I lost, but I had a couple of, of uh, ambient occlusion renders of an unfinished project, and that's about it. But I want to do a project where I model this thing, his plant incubator. And because it's not my original design, it's his, um, I'm, I, I, I couldn't include that in the challenge, I don't think. But I uh, am encouraging you to go and check out uh, his work on ArtStation, and he has some models uh, for sale as well. And what I do is I, I write to the artist, and then I ask their permission to model their stuff uh, on, uh, on video um, and to show their artwork uh, you know, as a reference, and I, I link the people to their to their page and stuff. Um, I don't feel it's right to go ahead and and do something without their permission. And uh, this way, I show respect to the artist and uh, maybe give them a little bit of business or traffic or or visibility or whatever. But I mean, uh, his stuff is uh, top notch. Uh, this guy is probably a third of my age, working. Um, in Max, uh, as far as I can tell, at least for this project, uh, and often I find that very interesting. Where I see an artist who's done something in Max or Maya or Modo, uh, sometimes in Blender, and 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 then I like to try and do it in Blender and see see what I can uh, come up with and what I can learn uh, and uh, pass on to uh, to you guys. So you know, just as I scroll through his his stuff, um, this guy is a pro. And I am a relative uh, amateur, as you know. Um, but this stuff is just, it's so inspiring to me and is, is really exactly the kind of, of work that I would like to be able to do. And if I can sometimes uh, do it, I would like to show you how I would do it. Sort of living in that real time and trying to figure things out. So for example, um, again, I don't have permission yet uh, to use this and he may not give it to me, uh, but when I first saw this, as I just did a search for sci-fi um, science lab or whatever, I came across this and I think probably what struck me was uh, that it looked somewhat doable. Um, not like this, but um, you know, relatively straightforward modeling and I think probably Max would agree what I find um, difficult sometimes is when I look at this determining what exactly is modeled and what exactly is uh, textured so for example in this thing here you can see this top black piece this is going to be modeled and this rectangular shape is modeled and this piece here is modeled but I mean the detail on this it's not just a piece and I'll show you how I would do this but I mean there's a this nice little bevel on there and even up at the top up here there's a slight lip up there I I don't know that I would ever have thought to do that um, this is the attention to detail on that even down here where you where you come down okay obviously there's a slight bevel there we come down we come in and then a slight lip uh, as well or actually I think there's a slight lip and then the top of these rectangular glass enclosures you come over here you can see the glass enclosure but often there's a small lip on these things that just gives that extra bit I don't know that I would do that but back to the modeling or texturing um, fortunately this image has some side views and you can get some hints like for example this looks to me like it's a, uh, a substance painter uh, or something along that line. Um, uh, normal, uh, stamped in normal piece. 
it looks a little bit like this is cut in and then stamped on or modeled so you know these these little pieces that you know that's that's substance painter or 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 it's a you know uh, an alpha created by him and then stamped in uh, not necessarily modeled and there might be it might come down here this might be stamped in but I think I would probably do that little indent as geometry and then maybe stamp this in um, I don't know about these uh, again you know and I don't know about this this piece here if there's a cutaway and then and then this is modeled in or maybe not modeled in maybe again part of the texture I think you know you could do these circles here but I think it would be a, a drag to do it it would just mess up the geometry so I think I would I would I would texture those in as well as I continue to use uh, things like substance painter um, I get a better sense of um, what's modeled and what's textured and not working in the industry and not uh, you know just being self-taught I don't always uh, know how to proceed and I, I do it as I as I learn um, obviously you know these you know pipes would be modeled and, and this piece is modeled but these things here on the top those circles and this thing are probably uh, textures and that that's probably texture those things and this thing uh, even this piece you could model it in uh, and then and then just add that and, and model these things um, I'm not sure exactly how I would handle some of this. Some of this I would probably model, whereas he would have used uh, texture, uh, or vice versa. Um, we got the lights in here, and you know these things are, are are textures, texture, obviously the text, and this thing. I'm thinking I would do a I would do a rectangular like a boolean in there, and then this might be a piece. The white part might be a modeled piece, and then these are textures. I wouldn't necessarily have access to all of the same textures anyhow and so I might do it my own way either with textures and, and some with modeling probably end up doing more modeling than 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 he would um, but anyhow um, you know that's the uh, that's the kind of thing that I would I would like to do um, and then you know I, I certainly would not have the same uh, fonts and and uh, I would not be able to do the same texturing job, but it's a, it would be practice uh, in modeling, and it's a really cool uh, piece. It would take me a number of videos uh, to do it, uh, but I would really like to have a go. But I don't feel that I can begin, other than sort of showing you um, his art station page and, and introducing you to him. <laughs> I don't know him, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping to. Uh, to get to know him uh, uh, and uh, to start a, a, a little dialogue and then perhaps he would uh, come by and 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 watch watch me model this and uh, and uh, see the progress and uh, we could get some feedback from him a similar thing happened with Jack Perry let's see if I can find Jack Perry real quick okay well this is Jack Perry's no, that's not Oh, where Jacko? Why did they do that? Um, Jack Perry uh, is the lead character artist at No Code now, and uh, he uh, did work for Alien Isolation. Um, and uh, you can see here that I, I modeled this uh, cassette player from from Jack. Here you can see uh, Alien Isolation. Uh, so he worked on uh, on the game, uh, and so I had seen his motion tracker uh, that was used in the game, and I wrote to him and I asked him if he would allow me to model it on camera because it's his design; it's not mine. And. Uh, he, you know yeah he wrote me back and he said yeah go for it and he provided gave me some advice and he, he he watched some of my videos and uh we become friends on facebook and uh, i write him now and then for uh, advice and uh he i also went on by the way and i did his uh alien isolation uh bomb as well 
not that one, but one of these ones in here somewhere. There it is, right? And I had some trouble. Uh, I couldn't see everything from every angle. Uh, oh, I guess I did this one. I think I did this one as well. And he gave me some uh, advice as to how how it could be done, you know, because, you know, he's not working in Blender, and um, you know, and I was, and so it was really helpful uh, to have someone in the industry uh, providing some some feedback, and stuff like that can happen. Um, these are busy uh, busy people, but you know, if you write to them and show them some respect and uh, ask their permission. They're often more than willing to let you uh, have a go at their at their stuff, and they think they get a little bit of a a little bit of a chuckle watching us fiddle around, stumble around uh, with uh, with stuff that they did very professionally. And so um, I am waiting to hear back from Max. We'll see if he gets in touch with me. Um, I can't really continue without his uh, permission. If he comes back and he says, yeah, go for it, I might ask him some questions about the model, uh, this one, and uh, what is modeling and what is texturing and any advice. Um, and then if it goes well, I mean, there might be other things. Um, I tend to look for stuff that does not look impossible for me to model. So as I just look at something like this, um, when I say, you know, could I, could I do this? Um, and, you know, some of it, you look at that and you learn and you say, how would I make this rounded part? And then you can sort of imagine, okay, well, yeah, okay, I can imagine a plane here and I could bevel the edges, cool, and then I could pull it down here, and it'll go there, and then, okay, then there's this piece here, what would I do? Could I do a boolean in there and how would it work? What would I have to fix up? And uh, all right, then you got, you know, it comes down around and okay, I can, I can model this shape as a, as a plane with rounded rectangle and I could put a circle there and then, okay, a cap with, with some little vertical, um, you know, lines there. We've done that kind of stuff before. Let's see, we could do an inset here and then a another inset or wait or is that is that texture i mean when you look up here it looks a little bit like texture it looks really nicely indented here and not so much there maybe that's just a texture in this stuff because some of this would be hard to model um you know so you look at this and say how how would i do some of this could i do some of this and you go yeah and if there's parts that you couldn't do for some reason, like, uh, I don't know, like, if you say you couldn't do the fan, just don't do it, leave it off, or do something else there, and you learn. So, you know, this might be another interesting uh, model to try and exercise, you know. This thing here looks, looks like a texture to me uh, on there. And then you've got all the, the decals that are ripped and stuff, and I need to, to work more on that. And just beautiful texturing. Uh, the bolts, uh, you know, in the past, I remember when I was doing Jack Perry's um, motion tracker, I was modeling all the bolts, pretty high poly, and, and, and trying to get little indents and stuff. And, uh, and he said to me, you know, he says, that's, all that stuff's really easy to do in Substance Painter. And uh, so, um, you know, I still tend to model my bullets, but really, I probably should just do this. Be much, much easier. Um, the problem is uh, for for you guys and gals, um, for some of you anyhow, because my channel is geared towards sort of relative beginners. Uh, we are not pros here; we're just having fun. Um, some of you don't have access to uh, these uh, some of these software. Although a lot of you seem to have Marmoset, and I'm thinking, how could you afford that? I don't even have Marmoset, but not everybody has Substance Painter, and while I do have Painter and Designer, um, I just don't have a lot of time to practice with them when I've got two young kids and three dogs and a wife, and I'm living out here in Atlantic Canada trying to feed the family, and uh, it's, 
it's after midnight out here and I'm talking about modeling and I can work at Blender and then there's Substance Painter and then there's Designer and then there's Smudger Pro that I sometimes use and now this uh, yeah, Raven North is uh, going to do me some tutorials on uh, how to make um, nice graphics in Inkscape to use uh, here for like your panels and stuff like that. Uh, your uh, computer screens, Elkar stuff. There is so much to learn and uh, let alone trying to advance in learning or watching uh, some of my other colleagues like Bellados 3D and uh, the likes of him, uh, their uh, video tutorials. So uh, there's not a lot of time is all I'm, I guess I'm saying to, uh, to do everything that we want to do. Now look, we got different angles, okay? So let's have a look at this piece here. Okay, and the other thing is, um, a lot of this stuff is lower poly than I would do. And because I'm not really uh, into doing, uh, trying to do games or anything like that, I used to do games in Flash. Um, but you know, a lot of this is really, really doable. And of course it is. I mean, you know, that's 3D modeling. It's not, uh, you know, flying to the moon. Um, but there is software that is used uh, to stamp on these uh, these decals, these alphas, these uh, normal uh, maps for detail. And um, we don't all have this uh, have the software. We don't all have the know-how uh, to do that and to practice doing it. Uh, and these people who do this for a living and maybe are a little bit younger and have the energy and and uh, the time to burn the candle at both ends uh, have had some practice doing this and so for me um, I just want I just want to do what I can um, and uh, show you what I'm doing and if you enjoy watching uh, me model then then that's awesome I'm, I'm happy about that the other thing that I find very helpful is this kind of stuff, right? You can see how, uh, now that I look at this, I can see what's modeled. So look at this, the top, those top slats, they weren't modeled, right? They were textured in, okay? But there is some modeling going on here. And you can see in here, look, we've got some tries here, okay? And they're not shying away from them, okay? Because they're flat and they're, and they're not gonna cause a problem, but we can see, so this is extremely helpful uh, in, in in seeing at least at this stage uh, some of the stuff that is modeled and some of the stuff that isn't and just how much detail is needed to do this I mean these pipes are pretty low low poly whereas I would end up probably uh, you know uh, using the subdivision surface on them um, but um, you know we got a little bit of a higher poly sort of disc here, but these are just, you know, rectangles. Uh, maybe, maybe some tries in there. Um, and as you can see here, you know, so yeah, so it's, it's all a, a, a you know, a, a learning experience. And so that's where I'm at right now uh, with all of that. And, uh, you know, this is the thing that I want to start working on here. Um, as I look at this, I want to say just another couple of, of uh, things about about this uh, plant incubator. You can see here in the in the glass that these are basically copied over. All right, uh, I can see some repetition. You know, so we could make one texture and and reuse it. This plant uh, may just be rotated around. There might be different plants, but um, you know, like if I look at that piece, I see it there. I see it there in the glass. So not everything is uh, an individual instance of uh, of this in the texturing. Some of it's uh, repeated. All right. So, anyways, that's where it stands right now. I'm hoping to get permission to go ahead and uh, model this. Uh, in the meantime, this video I hope will just serve as uh, uh, an introduction to uh, Max and to Jack Perry and uh, a little bit of uh, talk about how I uh, would go about starting to model something. Um, I'm not uh, saying that I am a, a great modeler 
or texture because I'm not you guys know that uh, this is just uh, my process uh, for anyone who's interested and who is uh, learning um, maybe there's something that you can gain from watching me or listening to me maybe not uh, that's cool um, let's see what happens take care